OK, uh, table four, who's? Great. You can just, sorry, why don't you come over here so everyone can see you and tell us who you are, where you're from, why you're here, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> if I'm sitting down, it doesn't make much difference when I'm standing up. Okay. Um, I'm Sylvia Meek, and I'm from the Malaria Consortium and reporting back on the, the group about the future of NETS. Um, I think the first uh, statement, which was quite unanimous in our group, is that there is a future for NETS. Uh, people will be glad to hear around this table, this room, I'm sure. Um, uh, but there was quite a lot of discussion about the need for better nets and for stronger nets. Um, and, uh, and there was also some discussion about, um, about some of the messages that we're sending, that which can, can be rather confusing sometimes. Um, for instance, are we now saying that it doesn't matter so much if your net's treated? which is clearly not what we're trying to say, but in the environment where resistance is, uh, is threatening, then we do re really need to start looking a little bit more about what is the value of the, the net itself as well as the insecticide. Um, I'm afraid that all the points I have have more questions than answers, but um, I think some of them are moving in a direction of things that, that, that may have um, fairly practical um, endpoints. Uh, I think one of the things that came across throughout the discussion was that we really need to find ways to do more to stimulate uh, and incentivize innovation. It came across in a lot of different ways, um, whether it's how markets work, what, what the tools, the products, and so on. Uh, but what we're lacking at the moment is, is the way of supporting that. And um, some of the issues have come up in different groups um, uh, on that, but it's something that really needs more focus. Um, and then what we did find was that a lot of the areas in terms of the future of NETS um, uh, were areas where we do need to balance very conflicting objectives. Uh, all sorts of areas were like that. There was the, the discussion on universal coverage versus targeting. It's a debate that uh, many of us have been through before, but it's coming back again now. And I think part of it is defining more clearly what we mean by targeting, particularly in a, uh, an era where transmission patterns are changing and areas where risk was high um, in the past. Uh, nowadays, in some of those areas, it's, it's getting lower. So, so there's still quite a lot that needs to be thought of there. Uh, the other conflict was the, uh, the conflict between single interventions and combinations of interventions or multiple interventions. This was partly, this has become perhaps more emphasized now because of the issue of resistance and thinking about the approaches to drug resistance where everyone really supports the idea of combination therapies. Should that be the approach that, that would, would uh, play a role in uh, insecticide resistance? But even beyond the uh, resistance issues, the the idea that more people will access nets if, uh, or, or protection from mosquitoes if there are multiple tools and multiple ways uh, is, is an issue. Um, and then the, the discussions between um, the cost of, of nets and the durability, the cheap versus the high quality uh, spectrum. Um, one of the things that was really important was how to get some of these messages a bit clearer, accepting that we do have some uh, conflicting objectives which we, we don't have a, a consensus around, but how can we perhaps more efficiently come to a, a point where we can actually just get on and do something while waiting for more evidence to be able to resolve some of those issues um, and, and not losing too much time on that. Um, I think there is a risk that will cause confusion if the, de if, if the debate is the end point, and so uh, that could uh, risk a lack of interest. Um, I think overall we did support as a group uh, multiple combination approaches um, in general, although very much aware of the cost implications of that, and also the, the evidence gaps in terms of what combinations and, and the difficulty of actually getting that evidence. Um, I think... Uh, um, there the, the clearly has been quite a lot of work on the big question in terms of combination uh, approaches with uh, combining long-lasting nets with indoor residual spraying. And um, that, that's a particularly uh, difficult one. And so far, the evidence isn't, isn't really supporting the added value of having both together, except in uh, areas where there already is some potential um, impact from resistance. 
um, quite interesting discussions around um, including more attention to housing design as, as, as one of the, the new methods to, um, uh, to, to focus on. Um, housing des design is changing in many countries and how, how can houses be made um, not only um, better environments for the life of the mosquito net but also in terms of keeping out the mosquitoes. And um, then we, we, talk, we were asked to look at uh, tools for outdoor biting mosquitoes and transmission outdoors. Um, and certainly there are some promising options. Um, and it's, uh, it, it, one of the issues there is a lot of the people who are infected outdoors are people that are quite hard to find themselves because the fact that they're living outdoors, they're often uh, migrant uh, workers or, or, or people that are, are quite hard to access. But, but there are uh, tools that are very much worth trying. Um, they tend to be in parts of the world where the malaria burden is actually starting to go down so that um, investment in malaria is, is somewhat threatened, but there are also areas where um, drug resistance is increasing, so that actually balances out the, uh, the, the lack of priority. Um, and then uh, finally we had um, some discussion about issues of distribution, access to different populations and health systems strengthening. I think there was a, a feeling that there was a need to focus a bit more on the constraints for uh, for the users. Um, we've done a lot of work on the supply side, but perhaps not as much as we should on the user side. Uh, and there was uh, certainly a comment that um, some of the current financing systems are really not supporting the tailor-made solutions that we need more and more. I think that was it. Great, thank you very much. Um, I'm aware we've run out, we're, we have run out of time. Um, but I just, so first of all, I want to thank uh, the Malaria Consortium for hosting this because I think, you know, some of us will have learned something new, some of us uh, may have not, but some of us hopefully will have met new people. And I think there's a huge value in getting a number of people on, in a particular area to come together and just spend time with each other and hopefully just share that space and, and uh, knowledge and also um, connect up with each other. Um, so I, I hope it's been useful. Um, I don't think these things ever change the world, but I think they do sort of um, offer new perspectives. And I, I do know that as I said, um, I've been looking quite a lot at systems change and the fact that you can have uh, a group of people sitting in a room and actually come up with new solutions and sort of think about actually new ways that aren't just sort of revolutionary but actually integrate things that already exist. And I think that's, that's one of the things I've heard this morning is that we're not trying to create something completely new, but you're, you're saying there's lots of bits of the architecture around, but often they aren't joined up and you don't have the right people talking to each other. And, you have, and that's a classic example, I think, of the, the major manufacturers not necessarily being linked into the supply chain, not linked into the... Um, to, to the organizations in the way that actually if they were to come together with more trust in a way that was uh, uh, facilitated well could actually come up with solutions to problems that that in the past weren't there because because people were taking a siloed approach so um, just want to thank all the speakers the facilitators uh, all of you for coming there's uh, I think some food um, and also just finally um, Sue George over there, who you've all been wondering, what the hell is that woman sitting over there? Is she doing her homework? Well, Sue is doing her homework because she's going to be doing the write-up. Um, so the purpose of, of these events, from our perspective, is firstly to host a conversation, but also actually to get some of those key points out to the broader public. Um, and also in that regard, uh, I'd like you to introduce uh, Eliza, who's uh, over there. And Eliza is the editor of the... Uh, Global Development Professional Network, who will be hosting the debate and also is um, is supporting all this work and developing that site. So, uh, hello, Eliza. Yeah, yeah, and 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 one of the great things about about the networks is actually about getting experts, finding experts who can write for us and who don't normally get the opportunity to get their message out and to so don't all. Uh, offer Eliza a piece about uh, malaria at the same time because uh, she'll be overwhelmed. But but uh, pass on your contacts if you're interested in writing because actually, you know, what the Guardian can do, one of the things it can do is take issues that normally don't see the light of day and don't get any sort of mainstream attention and actually give them that attention. That's one of the things we believe the Guardian can and should do. So um, there's going to be food, um, but just say thank you, everyone, and thank you, Amanda, for organizing it. And, and Amanda, it's particularly relevant because she was telling me she suffered from malaria last year and how awful it was. So, so she has the personal experience of, uh, doing, of, of uh, bringing to that. Um, but um, to everyone, thank you very much. And please stay and network. There's food. We've got the room for another uh, 40 minutes or so. Um, so please hang around. And thank you very much. <laughs>